I'm being manipulated. You're being manipulated. We are both being manipulated, and it's time to do something about that. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 16. I'm Dr. Chris Martins, and today we're going to have a really important episode. This is one of the most important learnings I've picked up, I don't know, in maybe the past 10 years. It's a piece of framing that, and science, of course, based on data, that once you understand it can really change how you see the world. And one of the most important things, this is going to impact your health, your mental health, of course, which impacts your physical health, all of that. This is about us being as healthy as we can be. And it starts with understanding the ways in which we're being emotionally manipulated. It's a big story. I can't wait to tell it to you. It rests on a piece of work I've, I've, I did a long time ago. And I want to bring it to you today because we have to have this conversation now. It's really important. We can see how social protests are erupting all over the world. I want to explain to you why that is. And to do that, we got to go to a piece of science. But before we get to the science, <clears throat> tell you what, uh, let's go to the slides now, Livio. Uh, rats in a cage, um, don't be one. Let's take a peek. It starts here. I have to rewind this story a little bit. So I'm going to rewind to uh, Philip II of Macedon. Uh, so this guy, that did, you know, uh, one of your random Macedonian kings, he was the father of Alexander the Great, so not just an average dude. And he came up with the divide et impera, divide and rule. Divide and rule predates this is ancient Greek times. The Romans used it. Uh, Napoleon used it. The British have used it. It's being used on you as well. Uh, it goes by several other names, perhaps divide and conquer. You know, the... Um, the British and the French, they drew this line right across the Middle East, right? The Sykes-Picot line. And uh, this was at the fall of the Ottoman Empire around 1918. And it's one of the oldest colonial rules out there, which is that if you can divide a people, or even better, take people who are already divided. These would be tribes that have really nothing to do with each other. And you put a box around them and say, oh, you're a country. Guess what? Uh, they're gonna, those factions are going to war with each other, and that makes it rather easy to get done, what you would want to get done is the colonialist. So this is an old, old rule. Look at look at what they did with Libya. Um, these are very, very distinct main tribes and ethnic groups, right? Uh, all sort of squished together, and it was called a country. And of course, that's why Muammar Gaddafi had to come along, and we called him a strong man. But really, honestly, there is no way to take disparate peoples who really uh, have very different cultures and ethnicities and turn them into a coherent whole without being a strong character, right? So this is a very old, old principle. Now, what does that have to do with today? What does it have to do with you? Well, plenty. Um, by the way, we could take this all the way down to a personal level. Narcissistic parents use divide and conquer within the own family structure, within their own family structure. So that would be the golden child, the child who's favored in this family structure compared to the scapegoat or goats, if it's a more than one other child in that family. So this is a very old tactic, divide and conquer, divide and rule. Um, and we, I want to talk about that because it's being used, and what it does is it's, it's a hijacking of our basic human wiring. We're wired to be social creatures. Part of that wiring is, is uh, around our need for belonging, around our need for inclusion, the existential threat that happens if we're marginalized or pushed out to the side. And as well, it's our wiring around how we respond to threats and how we respond to fear. So this is a really important concept. Um, let's go there. So uh, this is a video I produced a number of years ago called Rats in a Cage. And we'll just listen through this. By the way, uh, uh, you know what comes to me, Livio, when I look at this video is... Um, I've aged a lot in the past few years, and it's time to go back on a diet. But let's just put that to the side for a moment and uh, check in here now with this. Hi, I'm Chris Martinson piece. with another very important message for you. What do two shocked rats in a cage have to do with Donald Trump or uh, European social unrest? Everything. Look, people are angry, and many of them don't really know why. But I do, and it's time for you to know as well. I'm sure you've noticed uh, the left versus the right, the old versus the young, uh, liberals versus conservatives. We can detect this in the Brexit vote uh, and far right and far left candidates and movements gaining traction all over the world. The true reason for why all of this is happening is something you won't see in the mainstream media. And the explanation is rooted in studies done on rats, believe it or not, many decades ago. Now, in these studies, a single rat 
would be placed in a cage with an electrified metal grid floor. Painful, inescapable shocks would be delivered randomly through the floor to the rat's feet. And the rat would be miserable because there was no escape and nothing to climb on to avoid the shocks. But that rat would eventually just learn to tolerate those shocks, however uncomfortable. The trouble begins in these experiments when a second rat is placed in the cage. Now, two rats are being shocked at the same time, but instead of adjusting to and tolerating the shocks, each rat now has a convenient object on which to blame their discomfort. The other rat shocked the two of them long enough, and they would fight, sometimes to the death. If you want to learn more about this, just Google the term shock-induced aggression. It's all there, completely studied and repeated. It turns out that two shock rats in a cage can teach us a lot about people's reactions to Trump, each other in a politically fractured Europe. The rats fight each other because they can't comprehend where the shocks are coming from. People fight each other because they too are increasingly miserable, but they haven't taken the time to find out what's really shocking them. People don't have to be like the rats in the cage, but they often are. Now, make no mistake, we're all being shocked, myself included. Your intellectual and emotional freedom comes from understanding the where's and the why's of this story. So this is a really important concept, and this is why I bring this forward. It's not just to bring out, oh my gosh, we're being shocked, isn't that terrible? It's because when you have the understanding, the framing, to know what's happening psychologically, neurochemically, politically, all of that culturally, then you have the chance to be free of that. And that means you can actually have free will and you can make better decisions and, and you can, most importantly, be free from the really de deleterious effects of being shocked all the time because that stuff, you either have to tune it out, turn it off, or you absorb it. And um, neither is optimal because tuning it out is still happening. And if you absorb it, then, of course, this can lead to bad health outcomes over time because it's very stressful. So step one is just understanding that it's happening at all. And, and that's why I... That's why I care about this story a lot. And we do have a Students lot in common today rats. are shocked by a system that exploits them to become debt slaves while making student debt the only non-dischargeable debt in bankruptcy court. Now that, can you imagine that? The only non-dischargeable debt. They say a measure of a society is how it treats its children. So if we take our young and saddle them with a lifetime of debt and then say, oh yeah, that's the only debt you can't discharge. IBM wants to discharge debt because they go into bankruptcy court. Sure, go ahead, you know. The only non-dischargeable debt. Students. It's weird. What a weird system. Shocking, right? We're all shocked deeply in our hearts when Mother Earth is mauled and when species go extinct. The largest wealth gap in all of history is shocking. And a wildly dangerous, unfair, and enormously destabilizing social force in our lives that the Federal Reserve specifically created on purpose. The government lies about the true rate of inflation constantly, and people suffer shocks every time their paycheck is nibbled away. I've been shocked going to the store lately, first for what's missing, second for the prices. Um, lots of things are shocking in this story, and of course, the story we tell ourselves is really important. You know, the story you tell yourselves as a nation, as a culture, if that story is just basically not even a white lie, it's just a flat out lie, that's really shocking. It's, it's hard to make sense of that. It's like when you, when you find somebody you used to trust before and you discover they're not trustworthy at all, it's actually pretty deeply shocking. It's often impossible to repair that original level of trust that you had. And so when we tell ourselves that inflation, you know, Jerome Powell, oh, it's transitory and it's, it's not that bad. Of course it's that bad. When rents go up 18.6%, in a single year, as they have in many metropolitan areas, 18.6%. That's not transitory. That's not, even if it went to zero, next, oh, it went up 20%, but then it's stabilized. You know, where's that 20% going? Mostly to BlackRock, places like that. This is, the, this form of um, fibbing to ourselves, this lying actually has enormous erosive, corrosive effects on our overall trust in each other and the system, all sorts of things. It's, it's actually quite shocking. And you think, well, that's terrible. Why would you do that? Well, the reason we do that to ourselves is because in that context of that uh, shock, 
people are able, people in power are able to often to consolidate power, to uh, make huge advances, to get things passed. They wouldn't otherwise be able to politically get passed, things like that. So while these moments are happening where we're experiencing all these shocks, the correct thing to do is to remove yourself from that system as much as you can emotionally and then see what's actually happening. So this begins to explain, I think, why we're seeing a lot of the uh, social unrest that we are seeing. And the prediction is we're going to see more of it going forward. Atomic oxygen that is being sucked out of our lives. Whoa, that's shocking. But it makes no sense for liberals and conservatives to blame each other for any of these shocks. Shocked people fighting riot police makes no sense because if you widen up the lens a tiny bit, these people would quickly find that they are both on the same side of this story. Both are being shocked in the same ways and by the same people. These shocks are being administered by a very select small group of people who know exactly what they're doing. The shocks are specifically designed both to keep everyone fighting each other uselessly and to transfer new power and wealth to that same small group. So don't fall for it. Know what's happening. That's where your power comes from in this story. Withdraw your consent from the system and the shockers. It's that simple. Know the context and don't fall for the shocks, which are meant to keep you both angry and ineffectively pointed in the wrong direction. Don't be an angry rat in a cage. There's no excuse for ignorance in this day and age besides destructive laziness. Please free your mind and free your emotions from the shocks because it's only then that you can truly begin to harness your gifts and help make the world a better place. That's why I do what I do. Um, and so uh, I'm a uniter, not a divider. I, I this, this isn't me pointing my fingers in a different direction saying, oh, you know, we have to, it's us versus them. This is about we the people, the, the larger center mass, the 99.5% of us who are not in the entitled class that gets money printed and handed to them, et cetera, et cetera. We're the people who need to unite. And so this is my, my basic argument is, and this is why I tell you, I'm not left, right. I'm really not. Um, you know, one of the best compliments I got the other day was from a, a gentleman who said he'd been watching all of my COVID videos. He watched for nine months and he couldn't detect where I was on the political spectrum, right? That's the highest compliment because I, I specifically don't do left, right. I do up, down. And that's something that we have to talk about because in this story, things are happening really, really fast in critical decisions and, and uh, losses of Western values, right? Um, uh, things like sense of freedom, liberty, individuality, critical thinking. I mean, you've probably seen the New York Times ran a big piece to try and convince us that critical thinking was a bad thing, right? It's not to me. It's the best thing and it's the most important thing we have. Of course, there are a group of people that would rather us not think as critically. Um, and so that's where this whole rats in a cage thing comes down. Now, by the way, uh, this whole thing is exceedingly well studied. Uh, I, this is just, you can see my search term. You can see I'm using DuckDuckGo because I think that um, we have a little bit uh, better privacy and, and uh, search returns from DuckDuckGo. I love DuckDuckGo. Shock-induced aggression rats. That was the search term. I misspelled aggression, but it figured it out anyway. And, and look at this. Here, I just got a short clip. So you can just... Just look um, how well studied this is. This goes back decades and decades. Um, you can see here they've studied it with mescaline. Uh, they've studied uh, with the effects of lithium as modifies this. It's uh, marijuana, The on and on and on. Uh, fencyclidine, PCP, so um, methylxanthine, whatever that is. Th th I'm just, this isn't like some obscure piece of research I pulled out. This is exceedingly well studied and starting many, many, many decades ago. And it's about not rats per se. It's about any social animal what happens when they are put under stress? And one of the ways you do that is you give them shocks. In this case, electric shocks physically, literally, but a shock could be the metaphorical shocks that I'm talking about uh, as well. And so when you do that, um, those two animals, when they have something to point to, but they don't understand where that shock is coming from, they don't understand that there's a white lab coat guy over here or gal pressing a button making the shocks happen, so they fight each other, right? I don't see any difference between that and what I see in examples like this, so Arrest the police. Arrest them. these are people in the UK. Look at these, the, the police and the people, and they're all, they're pointing at each other, and I'll tell you what, the police are just as beleaguered 
in this story. When you look at how well paid they are or not, what's happening to their pension system, the pressures they're under, and what they're being asked to do here to confront these people in this way is, is, is a, a really hard thing to do. And yet, when you look at this, both, both of these groups really are actually on the same side if you look at it the right way. We're all in this together. We are all a human people who need to deal with some very big predicaments at this point in time. COVID's just one of these things that came along that um, is being used in this particular example to, to uh, create a certain amount of fear in people, right? So that's a whole other story that I've got for um, the rest of this, which is going to be over at Peak Prosperity. But for now, I just wanted to tell you about this shock-induced aggression. I think it's an explanatory function. It explains, you know, why you see this. This just came out recently. There's people in Marseille, France, who are protesting, um, you know, what Macron, the president of France, came up with. And they are very much protesting against having a health pass check. Uh, and this was proposed for all shops, restaurants, transportation. They want their freedom. They want their liberty. They want they want um, to be able to have rational, free thinking. But But... What they're saying here is they're done. They're done being shocked. Um, and they're starting to rise up. And we're seeing this happen all over the world. Uh, there's Cuba protests, which are ostensibly have a different cause. But these are all actually connected events. And in my world, I think that the shocks that we're seeing are just all over the place right now. It's hard not to feel them coming. And we are an organism. We're an organism that's designed to be a social creature. And we also grew up and evolved in nature. And so there's shocking things happening out in nature that as well, I think we're receiving. And so the question is, what do you do about that? If you don't have the right framing, if you don't understand you're being shocked, the tendency, which is exploited often by groups, by demagogues, by political parties, by um, elites, is to get those fingers pointed this way um, at each other. And But those aren't the appropriate places for those to be put. And of course, social media, or as I call it, anti-social media, uh, they divide us. The Aspen Institute's looked into it. This is just a, a quick uh, Google search again, how social media is impacting the political divide and how it socially divides us. Um, it's polarizing. This is a well-known thing. And so social media is specifically, it loves little groups of people all not talking to each other, really well divided, segmented sections. And so you can market to individual ones and they're marketing ideas, products, services. But that first thing, divide and rule divide and conquer, and then administer the shocks. And then so much is possible at that point in time. And so my framing is, I mean, you've seen this, right? You've seen left versus right. We have all sorts of protests going on. There's really horrid things going on in, in my Twitter feed and on you know uh, Facebook, places like that, with people saying really nasty stuff to each other, left versus right. But I don't think that's the appropriate. This is, this is just, this is wrong direction. This is sort of um, at the rat rat level, right? Old versus young, you know, this is starting to crop up. Oh, these boomers, oh, those millennials, right? That, again, that finger pointing at that level. Um, we see this as well. Uh, uh, the BLM uh, versus police, right? Or in the, we saw the UK example, or you see the police, the poor police get, you know, they're getting basically at the front line in France and Cuba, everywhere. They're the ones who are required or asked to maintain social order as part of their job. But I just heard today, and I don't know if it's actually true, I'm going to have to chase it down, but I heard that 100,000 police in France actually switched sides uh, this morning. So I have to chase that down to see if that's actually true. Once that starts to happen, now we're starting to get a very, very different dynamic in this story, story because it's not this anymore. It's not this versus that. So in this story, I think we're being played. We're, we're, shocks are being administered. And it helps if we know that those shocks are being administered and that helps inoculate us against them. It means that we can consciously do something about that in our lives is really important. And once I understood how I was being shocked and the impact of those shocks are being used and exploited by certain groups in order to sell me things, whether those are physical products or ideas or to keep me distracted so I wasn't watching as other things were being done uh, politically and to consolidate power, once I understood that, it was easy to see that it was happening. And I really don't believe that this is a time in history when we can afford to have all this finger pointing and fighting at here, down here, at the rat level, right? Rats on rat. That, that can't be it. We have too many predicaments. They're too profound. What we're facing right now ecologically, what we're facing and going to be facing uh, economically, 
with the money printing. Where there's Boy, there's some bills coming for that. What we have to do in terms of energy and the whole energy story that we haven't really squared up to and, and faced as a culture or, or even as a species yet, these are all things that require us to be as united as possible. It's why I don't do left-right. It's got to be the up-down axis at this point in time. So, and by the way, this is an example of divide and conquer. I see stuff like this all the time. This is a very popular subreddit, r slash coronavirus. Uh, Dunk face killer writes, let the anti-vaxxers die in the street. Look at that us versus them. It's just, you're, you're either a vaxxer or you're an anti-vaxxer, black and white. And it's so divisive right now. And I don't know if this is an actual real person or, or a robot that's out there sowing the impression that this kind of division exists. But that's a, a tactic that a sp- Somebody who's pressing a shock button would use to say, oh, you know what? I'll press this button way over here. So it says, hey, let's let the anti-vaxxers die in the street. And then an actual person will go, well, uh, how about we just round them all up and put them in the middle of the ocean? This now sounds reasonable because somebody moved the goalpost all the way over here to this really extreme place. And that's how it's done. You press the button, you move the goalpost, and then reasonable people used to say, I disagree with these people, but, but you know, I, I think we should talk to them is now saying, Oh, let's put them in the ocean. Like that now feels reasonable because somebody pushed the bar all the way over there. Or legit, this person, dunk face killer up there, actually thinks the anti-vaxxers ought to die in the streets. That's the level of dehumanization that's happened. That doesn't happen until you've been shocked so much that you see the other enemy and you just want to fight them to the death. But I got to tell you, dunk face killer, if you're a real person, you're just a rat in a cage, buddy. You fell for it. You got some shocks. You didn't know where they were coming from. And now you're ready to chew the other rat you see nearby uh, to death. And that means you're getting played. That's how I open this whole thing. This is being played, right? There's a lot of complexity to this overall story. As we've discussed here on this channel all the time, there are a lot of reasons why some people can't be vaccinated, but they don't have that opportunity, according to Dunk Face Killa. They are just anti-vaxxers and they should die in the streets, right? And by the time you've gotten to that fractured level of the story, I'm telling you we didn't get there by accident. That didn't happen by accident. There are people specifically running this as a strategy because it's been studied for decades. And we know how to create shock-induced aggression because it keeps the rats pointing at each other when you'd rather not have them uh, pointing a different direction, right? So step one, how do you get out of this? Step one is you have to know where the shocks are coming from or even that you're being shocked. So it's not, see, I put little red X's. It's not that, not the black you know, rat against the white rat, right? It, we're all multicolored rats down here on the bottom, and we have to understand the shocks are coming from on high. They're coming from the top down, not from the side. And that's a really important piece of framing because we get to step one is you understand that, and then you can reject that and say, no, I'd rather not be shocked. It's still shocking, but at least you can you have the opportunity of, of managing that consciously rather than having it just sort of happen to you. So that's the story I have today. It's called, uh, you know, this is, uh, believe me, if they've been studying this sort of thing to the level of detail where they're all the way down to looking at mescaline in rats, this has been super well studied. They understand the neurobiology, the neurochemistry of this, and uh, this has been coded into uh, the social media framework at this point in time. It's, it's, it's science at this point in time. So the science of fracturing people has obviously reached a fever pitch. It's uh, become very, very effective. I've been shocked at seeing people who I know are very intelligent switch their views immediately, 180 degrees, without any intervening space and being confused by that. Like, how did these people hold this view? And then just a week later, they hold this view with no territory in between. There was no adjustment time. It's just flip. It's amazing. So that level of control is, uh, is actually, you know, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm actually kind of impressed. But that's happening. And so I just wanted you to be aware of that and in, in this process. Now, we're going to be having a, um, uh, a webinar around this topic, and I'm going to actually expand on this topic back at my website, uh, which is I've got a lot more detail around this, around the role of fear in politics and other things like that. So this is, this is just what I wanted to share with you out here on YouTube. Remember, uh, it doesn't have to be this way. We don't have to treat ourselves this way. If you like this video, hey, like it, share it. Our ask of you is share it with five people, please. Just that's how that's how we uh, continue to do what we do, and it's how we reach more people. And we want to reach more people because we think people shouldn't be shocked and fighting each other. This is a time to be unified. This isn't a time to be divided. 
So let's reject the divisiveness. Let's understand that there are people who, for their own interests, are trying to shock us. Great. Let them try. But let's just say we're not we're not participating. We're not playing in that. And by the way, if you want to come by the website and you want to uh, participate in either see part two of this video or you want to come by the um, and check out the webinar we're having uh, very soon, you can click this link. It's also down in the description down below. We'll tell you how to get there, all of that. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed this. I, I really think it's super important framing. Sleep on it. Let me know what you think, and let's have a discussion about this because it's, it's important. I don't want to be manipulated. I don't think you should want to be manipulated. Together, we're strong. United, we're weak. And this is a time for us to pull together because that's what these times call for. So that's why I do what I do. That's all I have for you today. We'll see you next time. <laughs>